First at four, breaking developments in Michigan's battle against the coronavirus. Governor Whitmer adds more teeth to her face mask policy, and the risk level in Detroit just went up. We've been heating up gradually all week. Now the weekend looks like a steam bath. You've got your forecast and what's coming your way. Paula. Calling all fellow gardeners. Our services are desperately needed. And it's easy. I'll have a live report. These stories and more are happening right now on Local 4 First at 4. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Karen Drew. First at Four starts this Friday with breaking news about the growing risk for the spread of the coronavirus here in southeastern Michigan. I want you to take a look at the map, and this was just released by the state. You can see the Detroit area has been moved back into that high risk category, along with Grand Rapids. Detroit had been moved to medium high just nine days ago. Unfortunately, we have fallen back. New cases statewide are up again today, so we are going to show you those numbers in just a minute. But first, so many questions about getting kids back to school so hang that are hanging over so many families. Today, we have new information on what could happen with high school sports in the fall. Of course, nothing certain since it's not even clear in-person classes will actually happen. Let's bring in Devin Skillion. He is in the newsroom. And Devin, today's decision is not what the governor suggested a few weeks ago. Uh, no, Karen, the governor uh, pitched moving fall sports like football uh, to the spring, you may recall, when it might be safer because of COVID-19. That is not the direction the state's high school athletic association is taking today. Instead, the association announcing it is planning to play the fall sports as traditionally scheduled. It says sports like football, girls volleyball, girls swimming and boys soccer are considered moderate or high risk when it comes to COVID. But the association believes the risk level for spring sports like girls soccer and lacrosse carry the same level of danger. So totally switching the seasons just isn't worth it. Uh, of course, nothing is set in stone. That's important to recall here and rem remember here. The association admits competitions could be delayed if the COVID situation becomes worse or becomes more dangerous. I spoke today with the governor who says we have to be ready for anything. Well, I think right now we know the word we're all going to have to embrace is nimble. Uh, the fact of the matter is our fortunes can change very quickly when it comes to COVID-19. This virus is still very present. It is still very contagious. It is still deadly. What we see happening in Florida could be Michigan if we all drop our guard. And that's why doubling down on masking up right now is important. Now, the governor has not yet committed to reopening schools for in-person learning. I spoke with her on a number of other topics, including accusations that she's been abusing her executive powers. You can see our conversation coming up on Flashpoint Sunday morning at 10 a.m. So for now, Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right. We appreciate it. Thank you, Devin. The battle over in-person summer school in Detroit has moved from the streets to the courtroom. The group, by any means necessary, protested for four days in a row, trying to stop Detroit school buses from running kids to class. Today, there was a Zoom court hearing as BAM was trying to get a preliminary injunction to stop summer classes. At today's hearing, the attorney representing the group agreed to voluntarily dismiss the district and Mayor Mike Duggan from the lawsuit and refile the case in Wayne Circuit Court. The attorney also asked for more time to amend and refile her complaint against Governor Whitmer and others by Monday. So the next hearing now is slated for July 27th. All right, now let's get back to those numbers and Governor Whitmer is tweaking her face mask policy. The number of daily cases has recently been jumping to levels we haven't seen since May. The state recorded 660 new cases in the past 24 hours. That's 15 more than yesterday. We've also seen seven additional deaths. Governor Whitmer updated her face mask policy today. A new executive order says businesses cannot assume anyone who's not wearing a mask has a medical condition. That person must be questioned about why he or she is not wearing a mask. Then the business can accept a verbal explanation. New at 5, we're going to dive into that mask policy and talk about some other new requirements as well. We've seen a gradual warm up this week, but we are about to jump into a steam bath this weekend. Ben Bailey's off. Andrew's in standing by with what we need to know. Hey, Andrew. Hey there, Karen, and you're exactly right. We're jumping in with both feet when it comes to heat and humidity. It is returning on Saturday and Sunday. It's still very warm to hot out there right now. 
87 over at City Airport, 85 in Pontiac, Mount Clemens, and at Metro Airport, 87 for our friends over in Lapeer. Humidity is at generally comfortable or tolerable levels. Dew points are around 61. Heat index is the same as the actual temperature, but still, with temperatures like this, as always, even late into the afternoon, keep kids and pets away from empty vehicles. We're looking at dry conditions with a wind out of the southwest. Enjoy that ice cream cone this evening and make sure you eat it pretty fast because it will still be in the 80s. So some decent melting going on out there with the ice cream cones, whether it's one scoop, two scoops, or three. We'll talk about how much hotter it gets this weekend, plus an air quality alert for tomorrow. That and your seven-day forecast in minutes. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg is fighting cancer once again, but has no plans to step down. She's undergoing chemotherapy and says it's reducing the lesions on her liver. Her statement says, quote, I have often said I would remain a member of the court as long as I can do the job full steam. I remain fully able to do that. Ginsburg is 87 years old. Civil rights leader, the Reverend C.T. Vivian, has died. You're looking at a special moment from his life when he was honored by President Obama with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Vivian met and started working with the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. during the Montgomery bus boycott, sparked by Detroit's own Rosa Parks. Reverend Horst Sheffield III tells Local 4 many people owe Vivian a huge debt. Thank God we have a lot of younger people who have a different idea about what our society should look like, but we owe it to people like Dr. C.T. Vivian, who really, really risk his life uh, for us to be able to vote, for us to be able to have the same access to uh, commerce as anybody else. Vivian died of natural causes at his home in Atlanta. He passed away just 11 days before his 96th birthday. Michigan Congressman Justin Amash will not be running for re-election in 2020. The former Republican turned Libertarian flirted with and then dropped plans to run for the White House. Today, the representative from Western Michigan retweeted an article saying he's leaving Congress. Along with that tweet saying, quote, I love representing our community in Congress. I always will. This is my choice, but I am still going to miss it. Thank you for your trust. We called his office for further comment on his future plans, but have not heard back. All right, many of you agree there's nothing more rewarding than eating produce you grow yourself. But our Paula Tutman has a challenge for you, saying you could feed others from your garden. She joins us live from her own Macomb County garden to explain. Oh, Paula, what are you up to on this gorgeous Friday afternoon? Love the hat, by the way. Oh, thanks, Karen. A necessity at the moment. You know what? I, I, full disclosure, I am as stressed as everyone else, and sometimes I just walk out to my garden and just stand here and look in several times a day just to get a sense of peace. But today I'm turning that peace into action, and I am encouraging my fellow gardeners out there to join me. It's Friday, and that means the Felician nuns of the Dale Gracias Ministries of the Mother of Perpetual Help Convent in Detroit are feeding people. This year, after taking over the duties of feeding the community on Detroit's east side, when a nearby food bank shut down, the sisters went into high gear. Today, they have bread, cereal, non-perishables. We try to plan enough food to get somebody through a day. But they are short on fresh produce. Um, the people we serve don't have a lot of access to the fresh produce. Um, just because of the nature of the uh, uh, neighborhood. Fresh produce is a godsend for food banks and food pantries. Healthy, needed, hard to get, difficult to store. Which is why this year more than any other, citizen farmers, hobbyists, and amateur gardeners become most welcome when they have enough for themselves and then can share their bounty. If they've got extra, um, you know, definitely food pantries would uh, appreciate the extra produce to give out. Which I did this morning. Looking for some cucumbers. Not many ripe cucumbers, but the lettuce is what's ripe and ready to go right now. Come on, B, share the space. More than enough for home, more than enough to share. This is what Romaine looks like before it gets to your store. I call the sisters at the food bank to make sure I can deliver on a day they are distributing so they won't have to store it themselves. I cleaned it so they wouldn't have to. And then I delivered it. I did not pull the leaves because it's harder to clean 
Yeah. And so I kept it on the stalks for you. Yeah. Um, it's very important, you know, to give to those who are most in le most in need and. You know, they do enjoy good, healthy food as well. I saw the first story that you had, and I was quite interested in it. Well, we've been buying, uh, like, box cereal and pack or anything that we see that we think that might be out of this price range. Thank you. You, you are, are so welcome. welcome. There you go. You know, I just found this one, and while one cucumber, two or three, might not seem like a lot, imagine if you have two or three families, or even ten, who have a relationship with a food bank, and they're all supplying them with their extras. Now, Karen, you're doing something. Thank you so much, Paula. I really appreciate the story, and obviously, helping out so many people. Thank you. Still ahead, game show host Alex Trebek has become a warrior against cancer. He posted an update on his health, and we're going to show you that. Also, it probably seemed like a creative place to hide illegal drugs, but someone made a pretty dumb mistake on the label. We'll explain. But first, many kids are spending more time online during the pandemic. In good health, something you might do once a week to juggle their privacy and safety. I'll explain next. 